Hello. This is the Gospel reading and reflection for Wednesday the 3rd of June. Mark chapter 12 from verse 18 to verse 27. Some Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus and asked him a question, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, the man shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. There were seven brothers, the first married and when he died left no children, and the second married her and died leaving no children, and the third likewise, none of the seven left children. Last of all, the woman herself died. In the resurrection, whose wife will she be? For the seven had married her. Jesus said to them, Is not this the reason you are wrong, that you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God? For when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. And as for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the story about the bush, how God said to him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is God not of the dead, but of the living. You are quite wrong. There's quite a lot to untangle here in a few moments, but uh, long story short, the Sadducees were a party amongst the Jews who didn't believe in the resurrection or in anything much after death. Most Jewish people, including the Pharisees, and we imagine Jesus himself, believed in a general resurrection from the dead. Jesus, of course, was to show the way to a new life after death in his own resurrection. But here the Sadducees are saying, this resurrection idea is ridiculous. Imagine that according to the law of Moses, there's one woman who ends up marrying seven brothers in succession. Who's she married to in your resurrection? And Jesus puts them straight. Two things, really. The second one first. He uses the story of Moses encountering God in the burning bush and God saying to him, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, to say, this God is the God of the living, not of the dead. This is the God who declares life. This is the God who honours the lives of his servants, not by consigning them to oblivion, but by giving them life. And secondly, he says, you've got the wrong idea about the resurrection life, the risen life, what we would call the life of heaven. It's not a life which simply continues the conditions of life that we know here on earth. We know from Jesus' resurrection appearances that there was a strange combination of his own identity and yet some degree of change which made it difficult for people to recognise him and which enabled him to come and go as he pleased. In other words, he was the same but different. And what he's implying is that in the resurrection life, it won't be a case of simply saying, you belong to me and I belong to you exclusively. There'll be no possessiveness of the type that people of Jesus' day would have expected to exercise, especially over their wives. But there will be one equal love, one equal possession. We will be together with God. And there's a very interesting Babylonian text from three centuries before Jesus. Obviously a different religion, but a very similar idea of what heaven might be like. The world to come is not like this world. In the world to come there is no eating or drinking or begetting or bargaining or envy or hate or strife. But the righteous sit with crowns on their heads and are satisfied with the glory of God's presence. I particularly like that last phrase. In terms of what will satisfy us in the life to come, it will be the glory of God's presence. I don't think our identity will be thrown away. It will be transformed. And I do believe we will recognise one another and have delight in one another's presence. But all that exclusiveness, all that possessiveness which can mar our relationships on earth will have gone. We'll be together and equal before God, delighting in his presence. Amen. A moment of prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of life in this world and beyond. Help us to glory in your presence now and ever. Amen.